The following program contains mature subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. It's appalling that because of financial interest, making money, taking advantage of somebody yeah. with a condition, a medical issue, and exploiting that, making no, in fact, trying to see that this person doesn't, doesn't rehabilitate and recover, keeping them going. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It is, and as parents, I can tell you were doing everything right. You were doing everything in your power to help your son. And how much money did you lose? We're probably into the insurance side of things, probably into five, six hundred thousand dollars Wow. That's insurance side. Um, as far as just last year, my husband and I, we did our taxes and, you know, we uh, looked at, we probably $70,000, $75,000 out in cash, cash receipts alone, okay. But I do want to mention the fact, how do you take somebody's life, you know, the quality of life, um, you can't measure that in dollars. And, and our son, um, his quality of life has now been uh, diminished. And we know we're talking about this one center where their son was at, but I was even consulted uh, by some employees for a center here in California where the employees themselves were watching the owners of this facility give the patients drugs to keep them addicted, to keep them uh, yes. staying in the facility, uh, and all kinds of other uh, unnecessary testing and procedures yes. that were being done solely for the purposes of billing the insurance company. So it's not just the brokering where they're paying a fee for someone or some entity to bring the person to the facility, then it's what happens once they are there and the continued fraud that's perpetrated on the insurance company and the parents, in this case, Victoria, how did you first pick the recovery center? Did you visit it? Did you tour it? Did you visit Skylar during this time? Or how did this yeah. go on and on for so long without any kind of yeah. you know, evidence years, surfacing? Years go by on these things, right? It's, it gets really complex. In the beginning, you, you, take your, you took Skylar to a nice, reputable place, and they tell you, yeah, he's recovering. He needs to get out of the people, places, and things, change the environment. So they send him down to the recovery capital of the world, in this case, Florida, to a really nice place. It's a recovery place. And in the, in the course of that, a lot of these uh, young boys and girls leave for one reason or another. And once they leave that place, that's when these predators that are literally sitting outside waiting pick them up. And that's when you lose control. And we can't neglect the fact that your son also took the first step by saying he was willing to go to this facility. So, that, of course, that's also very upsetting that he wanted the help and he wasn't able to get that help at the facility that promised to do so. But at this point, I also want to bring someone else into the conversation. Joining us in the audience is the founder of Satori Waters Treatment Center in Florida, Dr. Barry Ryman. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Ryman. My pleasure. So I think one question that all of us have is what, I mean, how can this happen? These brokers will go outside of 12-step meetings and it, it's common practice for treatment facilities to bring their clients to 12-step meetings and there's these brokers that will stand outside these 12-step meetings and try to lure other treatment facilities' clients to come to their facility by offering them money or drugs. And their first question is, do you have insurance? Well, so here's the thing. They know if they're already on a van and they're being brought by a treatment facility, chances are they already do have insurance. And Dr. Ryman, there wasn't a law in Florida that made this kind of a brokering illegal until recently, correct? Correct, yeah. There was a, a law passed in July of this past year. It's um, House Bill 807, um, which now patient brokering is a third degree felony. and. Florida has become a pioneer in the revitalization of treatment. Um, although these things have occurred in Florida in the past, Florida happens to be now one of the safest places to get treatment. It's, it's like getting on an airplane after 9-11. Um, there's been so much attention and so much scrutiny and laws that have been put into place that the bad actors have kind of scurried like cockroaches and moved to other states, and the ones that are still left standing are the more reputable centers.